Hey everyone, and welcome to Local Viking, the Google My Business management platform. We're super excited to have you, and we wanted to give you this introductory video to get you started using the software. The first thing you want to know when logging into the software is managing your subscription is done through this billing tab right here. You can simply click your email, click the billing tab, and cancel, upgrade, downgrade, anything you need to do at any point in time. If you need to add sub-users to your account, simply click the organization tab, click this plus button, put in their email, choose a role, give them a time zone, and assign locations that they'll have access to. Seeing as this is a Google My Business Management platform, the first thing that you'll need to do hopping in is add your Google accounts that have access to Google My Business locations. To do that, you'll click right here under the Google Accounts link, and you're going to go down and click Add an Account. Once you've OAuthed your account, you'll see a screen like this, and you'll have the ability to disable or enable the locations. By clicking Enable, that location is then going to count against your location limit. The insights will start to be post pulled to it, and you'll be allowed to post to that location. Now, if you click on your Locations tab, you should see your active locations in color and your disabled locations grayed out. You'll be able to edit your location attributes directly through the Local Viking platform by clicking on this Settings tab here in the Locations table. And you can see that there are a number of attributes that you can edit directly in the platform. Please note that when you're editing these attributes, there are a couple of them that could trigger location re-verification. Those are going to be categories, names, sometimes the address, and definitely the phone number. You can also upload media objects, such as images, to your location through the media section here. You'll be able to choose any of the options that the Google platform allows you to, and you can post images directly to, directly to your location through this UI. Now let's go ahead and look at a location. This is going to be the location view page. We can see that we can get back into location settings, we can get back into the media uploads here. We can view this location's RSS feed by clicking here. We can use any of the three post types that we will get into by clicking this new post button. And we can see that our remote ID is the superscript of the location title. This is gonna be used for bulk uploading via the CSV upload feature. We're going to see location insights, keywords that we're tracking, as well as posts that are scheduled out on our calendar. If you need to compare insights and see how your location is doing month over month, you can simply select a date range from the dropdown and you will now see the insights from that period of time show below the current insights. Let's quickly talk about posting. The three posting types are going to be single posting through the UI, posting one post to a single location or multiple posts to a single location. You can do the same thing through the UI to multiple locations. And then finally, we can use the CSV bulk uploading feature. Let's look at the single post functionality. And we can see that we support all of the post types that the Google My Business API supports. You have your standard post, your event, your offer, and your product. We're going to be able to add the call to action to any of our posts by simply selecting here, choosing a call to action, and putting in a link right here in this attribute field. The summary is going to be the content of your Google My Business post, and this does support spin tax. So you can put spin tax in here, click the spin tax enabled button, and the system will properly deal with spin tax. If you wanna make use of our automatic post daisy chaining feature, you can click this button here, and what's gonna happen is when this post is rendered, it's going to have a link to the previous post for this location live in its content. You can use the local Viking image gallery to upload your own image or search our royalty-free image library to have images for your posts. You can choose to schedule your post or to post it immediately, as well as to have a post be recurring. If I wanted to schedule this post, for instance, for the 18th of February at 11.30 a.m., 
and have that recur every single day. I can put a one here and that's going to be scheduled and it'll post and it'll recur. This is very flexible and can be used for creating any combination of recurring posts that are scheduled over time. The event offer and product post types are going to have a few extra attributes that you'll need to put in up here. Just make sure that you're aware of that and you are properly adding in the attributes. Going back to our other post type, we can look at multi-location posting. It's going to have the exact same UI that we were just looking at for all four post types. The only extra thing is going to be your locations field here. You can click this and you can add as many locations as you'd like. And this post that you'll be creating will be posted across all of them, either at the same time immediately or on your schedule that you choose. The last post type that we're going to look at is going to be the CSV bulk upload. You can find that by clicking here through any of your locations. And you can download our example template by clicking this button right here. Let's go ahead and look at an example template. Across our top row, you can see all of the headers that you need. And we have in this field here, a description of whether or not each attribute is required as well as some example formats of how the, the data should go in. Please note that this field here, the Google remote ID for this location is very sensitive to being updated by spreadsheet programs such as Excel and being changed into scientific notation. We do want to make sure that this comes as a string and not as scientific notation. Another note, is scrolling over to look at our schedule that field. Make sure that you pay special attention to the date format and make sure that you keep that formatted as a string and not as a calendar field or a date time field. You'll see a number of examples right here. The first six or seven rows are going to be example fields. And when you actually want to post with this live, what you're going to need to do is select all of the data delete it all, and then go line by line and add your data in. Once you've finished your CSV, you can come here, choose file, click upload, and that's going to process the CSV through the system. You can click into your CSV's date field and you'll see any errors as well as successes that the system has when it's processing your file. One of the last things we have that we want to go over is local rank tracking. You'll notice that every single time you click into a location, you will have the opportunity to add keywords. The local Viking keyword management platform is built on a credit system. That means that you will have a number of credits across your account and you can use them in any way you see fit. When we add keywords, we can choose to add the keyword and then we add the search type, which means we have access to track Google local data, Google organic data, and Google organic mobile data. We choose the frequency of how many times a month we want our keywords to be updated. It can be every 48 hours, once a week, or bi-weekly. Once you've done that, the system is going to continuously pull in your keyword rankings across the different categories that you chose. The last piece of functionality that you may not see live yet, but you might be getting emails, is the attribute tracking. Local Viking is always monitoring changes to your location attributes so that you can be updated when those locations happen or when those changes happen. Malicious GMB changes are something that is plaguing the industry and you'll be able to get notified when somebody tries to update your business's phone number, its address, or anything else that you might not want updated. Again, we want to thank you for hopping into the platform. If you do need any other guidance, feel free to click this help button right here to get our documentation or you can click this live chat button and get access directly to one of the team members. We look forward to you using the software and feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions.